All right, guys, it is a big day because we have a new knife from our good friend, Ben Peterson. It's his first fixed blade. It is his first knife made in the United States, and this thing is made to party. I like to party. And we've been partying all day, dude. We have been. We've been bushcraft partying all day. It's like a camping trip where we didn't stay at. <laughs> Which is awesome. And, and I think that, like, kicking it right off, we got some Magna Cut, we got some Micarta, right? And the OE is White River. Yep. Right? So obviously like tried and true outdoor knife company yep. making amazing outdoor fixed blades for a long time yeah. now. But the philosophy behind this is really fun too. Yeah. And that's kind of why we were out here. The way that you describe this to me and the reason that we're out here having fun and, and bushcrafting about, right? Is this is like weekend adventure. You can carry it as an EDC knife, yeah. leave the office, leave the construction yard, leave the world, head out for the weekend with your buds and just have a good time. Yeah. So here's the deal. We, we named it Lulu. We're actually sitting in Lulu Pass yeah. outside of Cook City, Montana. And I named at Lulu because this area right here is like this gateway to adventure. Literally, a guy just drove past with like a snowmobile and an e-bike. We've had like side-by-sides driving past. Yeah. You got hunting up here, backpacking. Like it's one of these places that like, to me is like the heart of America where you can just like choose your own adventure. Yeah. And so we named it Lulu and I really feel like it's kind of this knife where you can choose an adventure with it and go and do it. And it's a nice companion tool yeah. for adventure. When, you know, we're talking about partying and bushcrafting, right? Yeah. When we're talking bushcrafting, I think that there's also a lot of misconceptions. And we've been talking about this yeah, a lot, right? All day. Like bushcrafting, I think that a lot of us think that bushcrafting is this like, you know, almost spiritual endeavor, right? Yeah. That has to be done with this purity or else you've marred it, right? Yeah. And I also think that we have misconceptions about bushcrafting as like, it's a survival thing or it's a right. this thing. It can be, don't get me wrong, those skills can help you in nature. But for me, bushcrafting is 100% always, I'm gonna go camping, Honestly, usually I'm gonna go car camping, yeah. like in a little spot like this, and then I'm gonna pull out my bushcraft knife and I'm gonna practice skills. Yeah. I'm gonna make fires, which we made fires, right? I'm gonna do food prep. We did food prep, yeah. right? I'm gonna make little tools around camp and we made all sorts of fun, yeah. little dinky things that the reality of is if we're backpacking, right? Or even in a survival situation, I'm not doing any of that. No, right? you're um, like getting out of there. You're getting out of there. Right? And that's actually one thing that I, I really love about, I, I did some researching on bushcrafting before mm. we came, right? Yes. And Guys, we might have to do a whole video on the way we think about bushcrafting really? because first off, I always thought it was like Nordic, right? Like the way we do it. Because, you know, a lot of the knives are the Puko yeah. style. No, that word comes from like an Australian guy. It's I like an Australian it. guy and a Canadian guy that like really pioneered the word and the usage and bringing back woodcrafting, right? I love it. And then the other thing is it's like being in the outdoors. It's not survival where you're beelining it out. You're volunteering being in the outdoors. Yeah. And that's exactly what car camping is. I'm yeah. volunteering to come out. I'm volunteering to be in the outdoors. And volunteering to have some fun and practice some, some and, skills. And I, I guess part of it for me too is is like I purposely left like a, a serving spoon at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm exactly. Like, Today we will make a spoon. Right? Ben, ben was like, you can't bring a spoon because we're making spoons <laughs> now because of the time restraints. I don't have a spoon. <laughs> But we had a great fire. We did. And we had a lot of firewood. <laughs> and because of time, like, my spoon looks a little bit third grader-ish. But, will, like, in an hour, yeah. hacked it out, That's right? That's a good spoon in an hour. And I will say this, that it turned out way better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, how do you feel about my spoon today? I feel great. <laughs> I love it. No, but, but here's the deal. Could I have brought, like, a serving spoon from home, long ladle? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Of course. But I think part of like bushcraft is doing something unnecessary yeah. to learn as you go, right? Yeah. Like I like making spoons, I think it's fun. This one's probably half done. Yeah, half done, yeah, yeah. But the reality is it's like, it's a game almost, yeah. right? And I think camping generally is a game. It's a game, right? right? Like now you can You have get... a house, I have a house, we don't have to be out in the woods. Exactly, but we, it's enjoyable, right? It's it a is. fun game to play, right? Yeah. And it can get serious, right? Yep. You're out backpacking, you have a situation, like you hurt yourself, whatever, right? And then, okay, well, cool. Well, I've played all these fun games. So now I have this skill set yeah. that like, oh, I can make a fire in a pinch if I have to, or totally. I can do this other thing if I have to, because yeah. I've done it. Or something on my tent broke and I can craft something with my, yeah. with my Lulu or my bushcraft knife totally. I'm carrying. And that's something that, again, going back to like the sanctity of bushcraft, right? I think that there's another big misconception that a lot of us have, and this is something that I got over years ago. And that is, well, if I'm gonna go out in the woods, I just need one knife. Right. Yeah. When the reality of it is, is like, first off, like traditional bushcrafting is, as we kind of understand it, and the things you make, 
you're bringing a saw and a hatchet almost every time yeah. as well, right? Totally. And that's what I do. I bring a saw and a hatchet every time. Like, yeah. could you imagine processing all of that firewood? No. Even with my tracker, my Tom Brown tracker, which is what I usually bring as a hatchet for me personally. And it worked amazing. It's a great way. knife, it's a great yeah. knife. I bring that for a hatchet and I bring a nice little folding saw. That's what I bring yeah. when I want to do practice bushcraft. Imagine cutting all that wood with just the hat, like just that one knife. It yeah. would be a nightmare. You'd well, never get it done. And that's, that's just it, is like, I've heard it said like one knife for the rest of your life. And the yeah. reality is like if you want to make a spoon with a tom brown tracker <laughs> it's gonna be a heck of a spoon you could do it like, but man that's a it's a task and like half, you're right? you're it's gonna be very challenging to do close fine work with that thing yeah. Yeah. right and so I, i'm on the same boat like i used to be like i just need one knife yeah but at this point in my life i'm like i will bring a couple a boatload maybe perhaps well and that's also <laughs> just a fun a fun yeah, thing right yeah, yeah but no i i'm on the saw train i, I didn't yeah. used to bring a saw because i was like well a hatchet you don't need a saw yeah but the reality is like dang saws are super useful a saw is you are going to enjoy your time in the outdoors with a saw so much more yeah. than just hacking at a bunch of trees all day long yeah now don't get me wrong i love splitting wood i'll split wood all day sure but when i'm coming out to practice bushcraft i'm not looking to just chop wood all day you right. know what i mean totally and that's something that i love that you've kind of encapsulated this right is is smaller size, right? So this yep. is definitely like around camp tasks, right? We even did food prep with it. Yeah. And like, it even took on some big potatoes, it, right? It struggled with the potatoes. But though. it got it Let's done. Let's be honest. It got it done. Though. It had potato struggles. It got it done. Is this better than a kitchen knife? No. No. It's a thick stock. Yep. And frankly, like it's like shooting carrots off the cutting board. Is that the ideal experience? No, not at all. But is it functional as like a camp knife? Yeah, yeah. it really is. And, and that was kind of what I was going for is like this knife that I could take backpacking. Yeah. If I got in a pinch, we could fix some things. Yep. But it could also just go camping. And it's, I would almost call it like an EDC camping knife I like in that. a way, yeah, right? Yeah. Like yeah, I'm yeah. carrying it in pocket on the yep. side of my pocket. Yep. And it's not, it's not like poking me in the ribs. Yep. It is a nice size for camping. It's not crazy heavy. You got a skeletonized handle underneath, so the scales yep. are removable, because, I mean, he designed it, of course, the scales, yeah. so scales are removable. And they're open source. Yeah, so and they're can, open source, yeah. so you can make your own. However, the G10 and the Micarta just chef's kiss. Like, yeah, so, no, I, I love it. And like, this, this has got some love and some... Yeah. This this saw the jungles of Colombia yeah. just recently. Colombia and Brazil. Yes. Ben took this knife down the Amazon River with Joe Flowers mm. and a bunch of other explorers, and he put this thing to work. Yeah. And uh, and so that's something I want to talk about with the Magna Cut on this is the the top of the knife you were saying is raw Magna Cut. Yeah. So that's like yeah. from the factory Magna Cut. It almost yeah. has like this hammered finish. Yeah. But the, the reality is that is what it looks like coming from Crucible. And what I love about yours, because I just used mine today, right? I just got yeah. it. But yours that has some use and some love on it, so you got some dirt worked into those oh, yeah. cracks, right? And yeah. it's like, oh, this is amazing because it looks like hammer oh, yeah. and really cool. But it's just the raw Magna Cut. The thing is, like, I wanted Magna Cut on it because everyone's like, Magna Cut, Magna Cut. You can only get it in the U.S. Yeah. So that's part of the reason this knife is made in the U.S. is because I wanted Magna Cut. You can only get it here right now. Yep. Um, I think you can get it in Italy. I think, I think U.S. and Italy are the only two countries that have access to which it. Which is pretty dang cool. Yeah, which is cool. And I was like, well, heck, I know the guys at White River. In fact, you and I were up here five years ago. I we were talking know. about this this morning. <laughs> we filmed this video with White River five years ago uh, here in Montana with a bunch of White River knives. Yep. And so it only felt proper to me to come in and be like, well, heck, like, let's name it. After the place that we were backpacking last time, more yes. or less, right? Yeah. The area. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let's bring all those things together and put it in a single package. I love it. No. It's so cool. It's kind of fun. It's so cool. Okay, so brand new knife, new to market. We got like an exclusive first look, which is so awesome. And, you know, it's yeah. just good hanging out. And, oh, man. And like I said, bushcraft party all day. We we have had some fun. We've here. had some fun today. And, and again, like, centered around this knife. Yeah. Right? Like we're out here because we're like, let's go out and practice some bushcraft stuff and just have fun. Yeah. Right. Well, and here's the other thing. Zach and I were like, we should hang out. And then we're like, we're always working. Yeah. <laughs> Today felt like hanging out and working at the same time. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just like sitting in my basement filming, right. which is fine. Which is always fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But today was more like, hey, this is just a bunch of bros chilling. Yeah. Which exactly. that to me is like, I, I realize it's a knife, but like now you've baked an experience into this yeah. thing and it's like Oh, yep. cool. Remember when. Yeah. And it's not about the knife anymore. It's about the experience. It's about me messing up all of the, uh, what are those called again? The tripods back there? The tripods? And the lashing? <laughs> no, me messing up all of the lashings. I'm going to get ribbing for that for a long time, right? Like, that's as it should be. But, like, I think sometimes, like, knives generally are this gateway to be like, dude, I got this new knife. Let's go test it. Or yep. let's, I want to try it out. Let's go camping. Let's go hiking. Let's do yep. things. And I think sometimes people 
they get knives and they stick them in a drawer under glass or whatever. And it's like, but wait, I realize collecting is an adventure in itself. And if you want to collect my knives, by all means, I will not complain. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is, to me, knives are this, in general, they're this opportunity to go have experiences. And that's kind of what the DNA I wanted to bake into this thing was go do things, right? Yep. It's not too big. So if you got small hands or you're scared of knives, like go yep. do things with it. Try it out, you know? Yep. Like go beat on it a little bit. So. Well, and coming to the size, that, that actually brings up like three interesting design choices that you've made here, yeah. right? So three interesting choices though, when it comes to bushcraft knives, right? Yeah. So one, not a squared edge on yeah. the top for striker. And we even tried striking, we weren't able to like, we could strike, but it wasn't gonna do it. It sure. just wasn't. Yep. The second is the grind that you put on it. And then the third is the size. Just take them in order. Let's, let's we got the through. designer here, so let's talk through these. Okay, so a lot of times with what you'll do on a bushcraft knife is you will put this 90 degree spine on the edge. And this is close to 90, but it is not striking material. Yeah, yeah it's um, it's sharp. You can get a, I, I could get a spark, yeah. but I just couldn't, it wasn't consistent enough. So, right? so here's my thought. Where this knife is so small, there are times when you might choke your thumb way, way up there. 100%. Today I did multiple times. Yeah, and, yeah. and if it is a um, sharpened spine, for striking, you basically are gonna wear your thumb out, you're gonna get blisters, hot spots, all of that. Yep. So I said, look, putting a 90 degree spine on a knife, just Dremel the thing, yeah. right? You can always go to that, but you can never go back. Yeah. So sure. I said, let's stay here and leave it that way. So yeah. I, I think some people will be like, well, how can it be a bushcraft knife without a 90 degree spine? It's yeah. like, well, put your own on. Like yeah. you, you could literally do it with a file if you yeah, want. If you wanted to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's part one. Part two is we stuck a Scandi grind on this knife. I wanted it because, again, it's very popular in the bushcraft community. Yep. And it cuts really well. It, it does a lot of these like spoon whittling yeah. tasks. Yeah, yeah, fire sticking. Incredibly like, all, well. all of these fun tasks that you love to do, the Scandi grind yeah. is kind of the grind it for just, it, right? It works very nicely yep. to cut. Now the problem with the Scandi grind yeah. is it comes to zero degrees. It is a zero grind in that Scandi portion. And what that creates is a very thin edge that is prone to chipping and rolling. So we debated it. In fact, we did a whole bunch of field testing on this thing. And we're like, this needs a secondary bevel. So what we ended up doing is putting a micro bevel on it. So you have this primary bevel here, and then there's a micro bevel there. What that does is changing the geometry so that there's more edge, there's more material behind the edge. Because the reality of it is, is with a full Scandi, you have to be careful. You like, do. You even, have to baby the thing. Even in magnet cut, in yeah. your guys' field testing, you guys were having- 62 HRC. Yeah, you, yep. yeah, 62 HRC. You guys were having problems because yeah. of the grind. And yeah. this is something that when we talked with Laren, who's the creator of Magna Cut, yep. this is something he said exactly. He's like, he, and, and it's funny because he's a steel guy, yeah. right? And he's like, yeah, no, steel isn't nearly as important as your profile, your your angles and your profile on yeah. your blade, right? Which is like just to the point that like even an amazing steel like Magna Cut, you'd have to baby. Oh, and, right? and to me it was like, Magna Cut's chipping. And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, like, this is not a steel problem. Yep. This is a geometry problem. Yep. And so we went back and we we micro beveled all of them yeah. because well, and I beat the snot out of this thing today with no yeah. issues. Like, and and it's still going. It's amazing, like, Zach. So like the first one out of the box that I got, yeah, I was just like whittling with it and I hit a knot and yeah. kind of just pried just ever and like a big old chip came out of the thing. I'm right. like, oh dang, yeah, like we got to fix this. <laughs> and it, it's actually been this really cool process of learning. And I think. For me, that's part of this knife is like, I've never made a knife in the US. I've never done a Scandi. I've never done Magna Cut, you know, never made a fixed blade. It's like, I feel like life should be pushing limits. Yeah. And for me, this has been, again, gateway to adventure, right? Yep. Like it has been a manufacturing learning experience for me. And I think that's what I want to recommend people do with it. Go try stuff you've never done. Go make a tripod, yeah. you know? Cook a stew over an open fire. <laughs> yeah. Like, had you ever made one of those little Y bend things? I have. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, you did like, a good job. But I'm a weird, I'm a weird hobo guy. So. You are, that's true. <laughs> okay, and your third thing, I don't remember what it was. Size. Okay, so size. Yeah, yeah, So, like, you'll see bushcraft, you'll see small bushcraft knives. Yeah. Like, like some guys will, like, neck knife, yep. right? Like, bushcraft knives and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I wouldn't say this is, like, the smallest bushcraft knife. No, not at all. But it is small. Like it's, it's tiny. a smaller knife. Diminutive. Diminutive, if you will. Some might say. So it passes the finger test. Which really is important nice. to your designs. It's 2.9 yeah. inches. Yep. So it's under the three inch size. Um, the reality is, if you want to baton something big, you're going to need another knife. In fact, today I, I was batoning some stuff and it was like, I don't know, it left like a quarter inch out the end yeah. of it. And yeah, it's yeah. like, nope. This isn't going to do it. This is not going to yep. work. Yep. 
But the reality is big knives can't always do small knife tasks and small knives can't do big knife tasks. Of course. This is a small knife and that was a design decision I made, but for the stuff that I wanted to do, the whittling, the, the camp tasks, it just does really well. Well, the size. weight and size for backpacking. Yep, the, right, exactly. All of those things, right? EDC carry, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and that was kind of my thought process. And like talking about EDC carry, I contoured the handles, which I think some people would be like, well, you added more, more girth to the thing. Yeah. That was part of the design philosophy too. Like I didn't want flat handles because I wanted to be able to sit here and use it for hours. In fact, in the Amazon, I, I literally said, I probably whittled for like 40 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah over the course of a week. That's wild. I sat there and just like, I'm whittling like dolphin toys and spoons. That's and amazing. And like <laughs> all this stuff. Right. And I didn't get hot spots. I did, so in the Amazon, your skin is totally um, oh, saturated. Moist. Everything right? is yeah. wet. Yeah, yeah. And so like, there were parts of my fingers like falling off. Right, Like from like being so wet. Yeah, <laughs> and I think part of that was like, I was using my hands in ways I typically don't. Of course, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I, I sat there for days whittling and I was like, Bang. Well, yeah, That's exactly again, what I wanted. Just the, I mean, we've been we've been here for like eight nine hours today, and uh, between all the different tasks, I've like, I mean, I've been putting this thing to work, yeah. right? It wants to go to work. It wants to go to work. <laughs> um, and I want, uh, I want that as like a ringtone. Can you offer that as a ringtone? I can saying? offer that as a ringtone. <laughs> it wants to go to work. Yeah, and like that's the thing is it is it's been really really good. The jimping's not so sharp that it's gonna yep. irritate your thumb and nice and neutral grip as well. So you, you can put your hand wherever you're comfortable and wherever you feel yeah. good with it. And I even like the touch with the sharpening toil. It's like, oh cool, I can sharpen this knife without eating up my handles and all that. And like, I, I think part of small size for me is control. When you're doing the bowl portion of a spoon, mm -hmm. like if you've got a huge knife, I mean, you're you're out here yep. with, your, with your handle and control. Yep. Like you can really get some pretty fine stuff working it with a small knife. That's kind of the design philosophy behind it. Some people are gonna be like, it's too small. Yeah. It, and it might be for you. Yeah. For That's sure. the reality. It, it, it legitimately might. You have a lanyard here, you could extend it out if you wanted. Yep. It's like I always say, I've got a medium to large size hand and that thing fits in my hand really well. Yeah. Like it fits really well. So if you've got a meat paw, you might find it's a little small for you. That's possible. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Overall, I was really excited to check it out and definitely throughout the work that we've done today, it did not disappoint. And it, again, going back to it, like it facilitated it facilitated this adventure. It facilitated yeah. some learning that we did. It yeah, facilitated totally. some problem solving we did. Yep. Like, sure, we had an ax and sure we had a saw because I think that those are critical elements if you want to play around with bushcrafting. If you really want to play around, yeah. you should have those two things to save yourself time and make it more enjoyable, yeah, right? Exactly. And this handled all those little tasks, all the little notches, all the little, yes. just so well. Like Good. just so well. I Good. really enjoyed it, man. Well, Thanks for letting me drag you out. Dude, I'm just like... I, I could just spend the day with Jay, Jamie and Zach out here. Yeah, it's just been great. Uh, I dragged him out to Montana Yeah, for the second time. It's just been great. Once every five years. <laughs> once every five years. <laughs> That's like once every blue moon. That's the here. goal. That's the goal. It, it's been seriously fun. And I, I just appreciate you guys coming out and like testing it out, but also just like the companionship and camaraderie. It's yeah. fun. Agreed. So. Agreed. Love it. Well, and that's the thing is uh, knives and stories, man. They go hand in hand. They do. Right? And this is a knife that you could build a lot of stories around, I think. Yeah. Like it's just built to do the things that you want to go do and have fun with. Yeah, you know totally. I mean? So anyways, good job on the design. Thank you. Very sir. much enjoy it. Are you, you going to have it. links at the bottom of this video? There's definitely links. Oh, use those links, guys. We got <laughs> links down there. Click the links, get yourself a knife, and, uh, you know, just get out and have some fun. Get out and, uh, you know, we're more than just a set of eyes and a thumb on the end of a screen, right? Yeah. So, like, get out and, like, do some stuff. I, I would love to see what people make. Yeah. Can yeah. we, we make up a hashtag? Dude, make up a hashtag. Uh, Hashtag right now is uh, bushcraft. You want to do bushcraft Ben? Bushcraft Ben. That's gotta Bring be. It. That's gotta be open. That's gotta be available. Bushcraft Ben. I want to see what you guys are making. Uh, I will follow that hashtag. Yeah. And I would love to just see the creations that that you're doing, or just the places you're going with it. Uh, bushcraft Ben with the Lulu. So love hashtag it. Bushcraft Ben. Cool. Well, uh, thanks for the rad knife. Dude, Thank welcome. you guys for tuning in. I would love to hear what you guys think about this as you guys get in hand. And uh, we'll see you out there. Catch you on the next one.